from what I gather on the ham, and this is not a very ham-friendly car, when you take these headlight rings and you stick them to the fenders, you weld them on, it's called Frenching because you've made them part of the fender. When you take and insert a tube and set the headlight back inside this tube, it's called tunneling. And if you leave it like that, well, that's not finished. Hey guys, welcome back to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick. In today's episode, we're gonna be Frenching the headlights on the 51 Ford. And I guess you already knew that from the title. Now, before we get rolling, we're gonna have to slam the brakes on this episode right now. Reason why, see this magnet? It sticks to the steel fender. These headlight rings are stainless steel. See, no sticky, it falls off. And that's gonna be a problem. Yeah, sure, you can go ahead and weld these rings on here and you can get it done. But in about three days, you're gonna get a thing called galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion. I'm not gonna get into the science of it, but essentially, when you join two dissimilar metals together, one's gonna to break down. We can't have them breaking down. We want it to be happy, joyful. So what we gotta do is form up a new set of headlight rings using steel, and then they'll be happy, see? I took this ring, laid it out, inside diameter, gave it a little bit of extra, outside diameter, gave that a little bit of extra. We'll take and cut this out and start forming it so that in a few minutes, hours, we get something that looks like this. See? That's a steel headlight ring. And once we're done, I'm gonna show you the process. Once we're done this, we can just take this ring, get rid of that one, and weld it right on to this front headlight area. Now with these rings, I kind of made them a little more subtle. These have a more pronounced kind of protruding effect and subtlety is key. So you see how much, how high they are? With these new rings, I stopped forming them when I was happy with this height. So they're about two thirds of the height of this one. And they're gonna flow in with the fender a lot better. See that? We have to do a few more things to these fenders, finish them up, we'll get them mounted on the car where it'll be easier to blend and work these headlight rings into the fenders. Uh, we have to take and cut away that flange on the inside and basically create a butt weld with little tabs coming down after the fact. I don't want any area where garbage and whatever can accumulate. A lot of times guys will create a little notch in the bottom for water to drain out. I don't want any of that. I want a nice smooth finish on the inside, just like creating a butt weld with these rings. So basically cut that flange off, create some tabs, weld them in, and uh, should be, it should be good. So it looks a lot more, a lot more subtle. So I went ahead, cut off the material around the perimeter, and now to get into the center with the shear, I'm gonna use a hole saw and create two holes side by side so I get the shear in and cut that off. Now you can use a hammer and dolly and start rolling this outside edge over the dolly, but it's gonna take you a little bit longer than if you use a shrinker. In order to create the shape we need, we need to take and shrink and reduce the amount of material around the perimeter. And that'll bring the center up. And we're just gonna go around and around until we get the shape we want. Check that out. First time around, look at the shape we've attained already. Just keep pushing the pedal with your foot. You can also stretch the inside edge and that'll kind of give you the same effect as shrinking the outside edge. But I'd sooner shrink it down While you're doing this, you can think about the meaning of life. We've got a lot done on the car already. Notice the A-post pillars have all been reinforced, reconfigured to allow for the electrical door connector. So on the 51, there's no room for that huge connector to come through from the infinity. I 
And there you go. We're starting to get a very nice shape to it. Nowhere near what we have here. Uh, I need to go around a few more times, but we're getting closer. I've made these by hand. No shrinking, stretching machine was available at the time. Years and years ago. I'm sure they had them, but I never had one. We never had one. You had to think outside the box sometimes. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm out of breath. And that shape is conforming to the original, to the original, to the first ring I made up earlier. Okay, uh, let's go wheel this up a little bit, smooth out the bite marks, and then we can go ahead and start rolling the inside edge. Now, I don't want to undo what we did, so I need to adjust the pressure so it's very light. I'm using a high crown anvil. Should push instead of pull. And once we get it kind of leveled out, smoothed out, I'm going to move towards the middle and stretch the inner edge. Shrinking the outside edge, we've gone from 20 gauge to perhaps 19 or even 18. I'll put a gauge on it afterwards, I'm curious. And then we're going to take this to the steel bench where I have a dolly mounted. It's a very special dolly just for doing headlight rings. Oh, wow. Okay, all smoothed out. Check that out. Nicey nice. Yeah, we have a little bit of something there. That'll all get cleaned up, ground down. Right now, I want to uh, roll the inside. Okay, so obviously that's not going to work that way. We need to go this way. can use that tipping wheel instead of this with a different anvil or upper wheel but a lot of you guys don't have a tipping wheel but you guys can fabricate one of these see there's a concave surface this way sharper edge that way allowing me to roll the material over I'm gonna have to get comfortable so I'm gonna move you guys I'm not rolling the whole thing over at once, just going a little bit at a time. Now we're getting to a stage where the wide face is too wide for the hole, so we're going to change over and go with this one. Following the highlight line, the sharpie's got to be on the inside. Just a piece of 3 8 steel kind of whittled out with the grinder to that shape. And uh, it's, it's lasted a long time.
Okay, just check the original hole for the headlight. We have to open this up a little bit more. Now you see, as I'm working it, the center out here is actually coming up higher because we're stretching. So we'll have to fix that by wheeling the outside perimeter and allowing it to run back down. Now the reason I'm doing this now is because the hand kind of gets a little tired working this out. So we'll hammer for a bit, take a break, do other stuff. It's getting close. Okay, it's getting very, very close. This edge is a little bit wavy. I'm gonna clean it up. Let's get a light, fit it around the light, see how it looks. And we might have to do some fine tuning when it's on the fender, just to finalize just a little bit. It's very, very close. Okay, let's see how that looks. Not too bad, a little bit of something here. And that's good, a little bit of here. So there and there. There and here. That's much better. Okay, so we're gonna leave it at this point here until we get this, that's a top actually, until we get it on the car. And then we can fine tune it the last little bit. So there's what we started with. That was our template. Basically oversized a little bit, taken created this one here without the fastening holes too, because we'd have to take and knock that down, grind it out, whatever, weld it up, because you got that, that hole there and it wouldn't, well, it wouldn't be smooth. And then the other thing is we'd have to take and cut that ring, that little rolled over edge over. So by the time you're done, you've done a lot of work to this. And when you weld it to your car, like I mentioned before, you're gonna get that galvanic corrosion and you're gonna have problems later down the road. So 
uh, we can use this for another project when we do an actual restoration. Because these here, they're in really nice shape. We can take care of that, smooth it out, clean it up, and polish these up. They're not chrome, they're stainless and polished. And you can do a lot of stuff with stainless that uh, normally you can't do with a chrome piece unless you get it re-chromed. So when the fenders get mounted on the car, we'll jump in, get these tacked on after we cut the flange out so that we have a butt weld all the way around the perimeter. And then we have our tabs for these headlights. These headlights, the tabs are actually different than on the 54. These are custom, custom, custom. Picked them up on the Jungle website. Quite nice. Uh, the chrome, who cares? We can black that out. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you got the, these have the halo and the high and low beams, all that nice stuff. So we'll get them wired in when uh, we get closer to the end. All right, guys, the time has come to install the headlight rings. From what I gather on the ham, and this is not a very ham-friendly car, when you take these headlight rings and you stick them to the fenders, you weld them on, that's called Frenching, because you've made them part of the fender. When you take and insert a tube and set the headlight back inside this tube, that's called tunneling. And if you leave it like that, well, that's not finished. What we're gonna do is French these rings to these fenders, weld them on, smooth everything out so that they look Part of the body. I didn't want these rings protruding out too far. The original rings stuck out a little bit further and they kind of looked, what's the word, enhanced. Well, we want something a little more subtle and these will fit the bill quite nicely. And what we're also going to do is take and cut off this flange that's inside this ring so that we end up with a butt weld around the perimeter. We don't want any garbage or whatever ending up in the bottom in this little trough and rotting it out. A lot of guys will take and cut a little notch in there. I don't want any notch. I just want a smooth finish on the inside so whatever falls in just falls right out. So first thing we gotta do is mark the perimeter of this ring so we can take and cut it off. Now up here is easy. I'll get that later. Do something like that. Sure we're still aligned. It's very important. Kind of like that. Uh-oh, it's missing. You guys can't see it unless you're standing on my left side here. Like that. So that's going to look good. We're going to take and leave one tab. We have enough material here to get one hole. The other two spots, we actually have to take and create tabs and extend them so that we can pick up the headlight bracket. Where'd you go, marker cap, marker cap, marker cap? There we are. Okay. So this is one tab that we have to keep right here. And we're not going to cut that away. This is another one up here. So I can probably color it in green, just so you don't accidentally cut them off. And we're gonna go through and just chop all that off. A lot happening right now, and tools are kind of everywhere. So here we go. Guess once we cut this off, there's no going back. That's why I didn't finish. Can you just believe I did that? Yak, 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 yak. I just cut this tab. Not a problem. We'll add it later. reason I wasn't too fussy about this front area finishing it because we weren't done with it yet.
will add to these tabs and we'll have to add a tab that I just cut off at the top. There wasn't much there, only half a tab and that wouldn't have been enough to bring it out so we can attach a headlight, not a problem. Oh, that's a sneaky ring. It's really trying to get itself back on the car. Sorry, buddy. All right, that's, 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 that's like butter, so smooth. Taking trim off a little bit at the top here. That's all nice, nice. Okay. So we have to take and clamp this somehow to the body, just like that, oops, like that. Wow, that's, that's coming in really good. We'll bring that out. So I'm gonna get a clamp on this. Or maybe we can just try tacking it. Let's try tacking it. Stay. Hope we can get this. Just catching by the skin of my teeth. One little spot I blew through on, but uh, not a problem. We're gonna go ahead and tack the bottom. I need to get a little clamp on this. Put a couple tacks and we'll run a bead around the perimeter. All right, so I got this all smoothed out, finished. Grab the headlight, and let's see if it fits. This is the top, because, oh, that looks and feels very good. It just slides right in, look at that. Only problem is we're backwards, but that's okay. I want to see if this ring would fit before I crawl up underneath and try to shove it in from the backside. Now for the moment of truth. Well, isn't that, isn't that sweet right there? It's gonna sit just back a little bit from the front. I'll probably black out that ring around the perimeter there. Just scuff it up and paint it black. But overall, we're looking really good. A little bit tight at the top, uh, side to side, we're perfect. I think it's the top that's a little bit tight. So there we go, guys. French headlights, making your own rings. Because as I mentioned before, if you use the stainless steel ones and try welding them to these fenders, you're gonna get galvanic corrosion. One metal is gonna to wanna to eat the other one. It's all about electrodes and science and all that stuff. And if you wanna learn more about it, check out the interweb. We customize cars, I don't get into science too much. Though I did love grade 10 science, that was fun. Anyway, that's it. We're gonna keep metal finishing and smoothing and working on this hood and all that fun stuff to try and get this car done for summer. Uh, we're really close with the body. A lot of the modifications have been done. Rear window, all these window perimeter areas have been fixed, all the rust has been fixed. Now it's just a matter of plenishing and smoothing and pardon me while I spit. It's been a long day 
and I'm pretty much done, but it's your adrenaline. You just want to keep going and going until, uh, until I guess you get a grinder in your teeth. That wakes you up quick. Until next time, guys, take care. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell up there so that you get a notification next time we got a video coming out. Take care, guys.